Hey guys, college football update week seven. As always, we start with Notre Dame and then we move on from there. So let's start with the Notre Dame pit game. Uh, Notre Dame survives 19 to 14. Uh, definitely their, well, I was going to say their worst game of the season, but uh, the first couple of games weren't really that amazing either. I mean, looking back on it, it's a, it's a little surprising that they beat Michigan, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, with, with Wimbush at quarterback, but somehow they did, uh, survived Vanderbilt, survived, you know, Ball State and, and survived this week against, against Pitt as well. So how good is Notre Dame? I don't really know. Uh, it, 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 it's tough to say, you know, the, the running game, uh, was completely shut down against Pitt. Uh, but, but I will say this, uh, Pitt in, in, in all, in all honesty, let, let's kind of break down the game for a second. Pitt had one offensive touchdown and that offensive touchdown happened in the beginning of the game. Okay. Uh, it was the second, uh, it was their first series in the second series of the game. And, and they, they took it all the way down the field and scored. It's fine. Uh, after that, uh, and they had, uh, after that, they did nothing for the most part. They had uh, around 200 yards of total offense for the entire day. Uh, they did have a kick return uh, to start the second half, which made it 14 to 16. So Notre Dame was playing behind the whole game. Um, I read a lot of articles, a lot of Notre Dame articles about uh, how this really seemed like a Notre Dame Navy game, and that's exactly what it seemed like. Uh, that first drive that I had mentioned where Pitt scored, they held the ball for 10 minutes. I mean, basically the first quarter was over, and then they scored a touchdown. So uh, Pitt had a great game plan coming in. I mean, just hold the ball and, and attempt to keep it away from Notre Dame. Uh, they also stuffed Notre Dame's running game, and uh, they, they, they really frustrated Ian Book. And, you know, I mean, let's, let's look at this for what it is. I mean, it's Ian Book's fourth start. So, you know, a, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, he just didn't play very good, did he? He was a pretty terrible quarterback. Well, let's let's take a step back. He was 14 of 15 in the second half, and he had about an 80% completion percentage uh, for the game. So uh, in 260 yards or so for the, for the game. So it's not like he, he had his worst game, but it wasn't a terrible game. Uh, from, from a scoring perspective, it didn't look good, but... You know, I get so tired of, of all of the prognosticators on ESPN and otherwise when they say, well, you know, Notre Dame should win all these games by three touchdowns. That, that That's just not the way it works. That's not college football. You don't win every game by three touchdowns. Ohio State does this every year. They beat Indiana by a point. You know, people say, well, Ohio State's terrible. And then, you know, somehow they, you know, figure it out and, and, and get to the playoff or, you know, at least get to the Big Ten championship and, and win. So, you know, Notre Dame is kind of built similar to how Ohio State would be. So, you know, how far is that going to get them? I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, you know, survive in advance, uh, especially after this weekend. And, and let's let's talk about that for a second. Let's kind of dive in. So, uh, uh, Georgia uh, losing to LSU. I mean, not just losing, just just getting getting destroyed by by LSU. I mean, you know, again, and I say this every week. I have a lot of these games on side TVs, and I'm kind of trying to keep up with everything, and it's tough to do sometimes, but. Every time I looked over, Georgia was what you know. Fromm could could not do anything, uh, and and LSU was 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 all over them. Uh, and it seemed like every time I looked up, that there was either a pass deflection and an, or an interception, or you know LSU was was you know storming down the field. So, um, you know, pe people said last year that that Georgia that they might have been a, a year early, and and I think a lot of people thought that this year was going to be the year for them, but. Uh, you know, it's tough. I mean, again, it, it's it's difficult to win. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with LSU. They still got to play Alabama. Obviously, if they beat them, well, then it's, you know, there you go. But uh, that's going to be a tough order. Uh, Penn State losing to Michigan State. Michigan State does this every year. Uh, so so not at all shocked that they were able to to beat Penn State. Although, uh, well, I take that back. A little a little shocked that they did it at uh, Happy Valley. But, uh, but still, uh, I don't know how D'Antonio does this. Every year, I mean, if you look at the recruiting rankings, he, he, he just does not have the types of players that you would think would be able to pull off these types of wins, but somehow he does it every single year. Uh, and people wrote him off, and, you know, they, they played Utah State, uh, you know, in, in the first game of the year, and, and everybody said, well, that's a terrible, they barely beat him by a touchdown. Well, you know, Utah State's 5-1 and one or 6-1, and one, so they're, they're kind of the darling right now. Uh, out out west, they're they're the they're the Boise State who's you know who's not Boise State basically, um, and and Matt Wells who's at Utah State, I don't think he's going to be there much longer either. So I I, I see some Pac-12 team or somebody kind of gobbling him up. Uh, he's done it done a heck of a job at Utah State, taking over for for Gary Anderson when he left to go to uh, Wisconsin, uh, and then Washington losing to uh, losing to Oregon. 
Hey, listen, I, I loved Mario Cristobal when he was at Florida International. I mean, I'm sorry, Florida International, he won eight games, and he had T.Y. Hilton when he was at Florida International. First of all, it, it, it isn't even what Florida International is now. It, it's worse than it, than it is now. This was 10 years ago or so. Uh, so he won eight games, uh, shocking, took him to a bowl game, first ever bowl game, uh, had a losing season the next year, and they fired him, which was ridiculous. And again, he had T.Y. Hilton. I mean, how did he even get this guy there? Seriously, I mean, he could, T.Y. Hilton could have played anywhere. Uh, so absolutely shocked uh, that he was there. But yeah, Cristobal, I, 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 fantastic for Oregon. I, I, I didn't think it was really a fit because Cristobal is more of a Florida, South Florida guy. Um, but uh, hey, seems to be working out, so we'll see what happens. But uh, Oregon, man, I'm telling you, if he can keep that thing going, it's not, you know, they'll be, they'll be right back to where, um, well, uh, I'm not saying they're going to be right back to where they were, but, but they're certainly going to be a heck of a lot more competitive. Uh, I actually think it's an upgrade from Taggart, especially uh, given how Taggart is doing at Florida State. I mean, can you really can you can you deny what I'm saying at this point? I mean, we'll we'll see. But uh, you know, uh, Taggart of course had had a uh, uh, bear was was hurt. Uh, a bear Herbert uh, can't remember his name. Uh, Oregon quarterback was hurt last year, and that's why they went uh, seven and five um, uh, for the season. A lot of people said that, and that's fine. But uh, but I still think Cristobal might be an upgrade. Uh, for that team. Uh, let's talk about Purdue. Uh, Purdue beating Illinois. I'd said this before, I didn't think Purdue was, was an 0-3 team, uh, and, and I thought they were going to win six or seven games this year. I'm, I still think they're going to win six or seven games. I don't think they're going to win more than that. I think that's going to be a tough task, uh, but man, they're on a roll, and, and I really thought Illinois was going to keep that close. Illinois is kind of one of my little pet teams this year. I uh, was really hoping that they were going to be able to do something. Kind of like Virginia is always a little bit of my pet team. I just always feel like Virginia should be better than they are. I kind of feel like Illinois is right there as well. But, uh, wow, just total destruction from Purdue, 46-7. to seven. So great win for them. They're now 3-3. Three and three. Again, I definitely think they're on the path to uh, to having that 6-7 or seven win season. Iowa State, you know, uh, this is such a great story. And, and, I, and I, I think you guys know this, but I've been to Iowa State, seen a game there. Uh, Jack Trace Stadium, loved it. People are so nice. I mean, it's Iowa. Everybody's pretty nice there. But uh, just fantastic. Fantastic place to watch a game. So, so just really happy for them that they were able to get the win. Um, you know, and Matt Campbell, there, there's another guy. I mean, how long is Matt Campbell going to be at Iowa State? And, and, you know, I say that, but Matt Campbell went to, I think he went and he actually played at Mount Union, which I've spoken about this before. Mount Union is a Division three powerhouse football program. So maybe he likes being the underdog. And, and, and I mean, hell, he makes three and a half million dollars a year at Iowa State. If he wins seven or eight games a year, he will never get fired. They will never fire him. I mean, because because it's Iowa State. I mean, Iowa State normally wins two or three games. I mean, he's going to win seven or eight games every year. They're not going to fire him. I mean, they're, they're, they put a statue outside the stadium for him, if anything. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, hey, you make it three and a half million, why not just stay? So, you know, great win for Iowa State. Um, you know, I do want to talk about this for a second because I, I looked this up. And let me, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caveat this for, for a second because I'm, I'm going to really upset Michigan fans here. But I want to make sure that I caveat something. If I was not a Notre Dame fan, I would be a Michigan fan, okay? I'm well aware of the fact that Michigan taught Notre Dame how to play football. I'm well aware of the fact that Michigan, you know, has, you know, Notre Dame uh, you know, designed their stadium after Michigan Stadium. I'm aware of it. There's, there's a lot of things that Notre Dame has ripped off from Michigan. It's fine. But here's what I'm surprised about. And a lot of people might already know this, but but somehow I did not. And it was, I was speaking with my brother about this a, a while back. Uh, Bo Schembechler, okay, so so the, the, the greatest all-time Michigan coach, all right, never won a national championship. It, 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 that, to me, is just absolutely shocking. But here here's the other thing. Here, here's some other things that are even more shocking, okay? His best team ever finished number two. He had a lot of other teams that finished in the top ten. I get it. So I'm, I'm going to say all the things that are true about him. But his best team finished number two is in 1985. They were 10-1-1, one, one, okay? He went to 17 bowl games. Uh, they were five and twelve in those bowl games. All right, he went to ten Rose Bowls and only won two of them. And I think it took him from 1969 to 1980 to actually win a bowl game. I think he went to six or seven during that period of time. So uh, all of the, I'm saying all of this because w w every time I hear, you know, oh well, Michigan, Michigan should be good and Michigan should be going to the national championship and Jim Har Harbaugh should be bringing Michigan back to where they were. Where were they exactly? I mean, they, they won 13 Big Ten championships with Schembechler, which is fine. Um, but if I'm comparing Schembechler to his contemporary, Woody Hayes, 
Woody Hayes won five national championships. If I'm comparing him to Nick Saban, the contemporary of today, Nick Saban has won six national championships, five at Alabama. Bear Bryant won five at Alabama. So there's ten right there at Alabama alone. Uh, Joe Paterno won three at Penn State. Uh, Bobby Bowden won two at Florida State. I, I guess I'm just, I'm a little shocked that they, they're constructing all these stadi- all, all these buildings and all these things for Shem Beckler, and he won a lot of Big Ten games, he won a lot of Big Ten championships, but didn't do well in bowls, didn't win a national championship, and quite honestly, if you're expecting Harbaugh to take you to the national championship, he would do something that Shem Beckler never did. I understand it was a different time. I know there wasn't a national championship game, I'm well aware of this, but a lot of other coaches won national championships without a national championship game. In fact, Penn State... There's a lot of people that always said Penn State should never win one because they played a soft schedule back then, yet somehow they won three. So I just find it a little shocking that there's this Michigan myth of they should always be in the national championship. Maybe just win the Big Ten first. That's an idea. All right. Thanks, guys. See you.